Welcome to one of the iconic sites forever linked to the Beatles, Strawberry Field. In recent years it's been redeveloped. Obviously it is now still extremely popular with tourists. They come here by the coach load. The gates that you have seen and will see are replicas of the originals, but nevertheless, it's one of those sites that people interested in the Beatles history should always come to visit. It's incredibly challenging photographically. Nowadays it's owned and maintained by the Salvation Army and there are memorial plaques laid alongside the footpath leading up to the building. Well, um, having photographed as much as I can at Strawberry Field, the gates incidentally, the original ones are still in the possession of the um, Salvation Army and in fact they are at the back of the garden area inside Strawberry Field. They were stolen in 2000 but luckily were recovered and to prevent any further such incidents the, um, the Salvation Army had replica gates made. Um, but anyway, as I say, uh, the, um, the place was full of too many tourists by the time I'd uh, done these stills so I decided to uh, go across the road about half a mile away to Calderstones which is where we will pick up the story next. So I'm in Calderstones Park on the south side of Liverpool today and I'm going to try and get a couple of images of this shattered oak tree behind me and there's a good 40 feet of it remaining so I'm going to try and um, interpret that with just the two lenses I have with me which are the 14 to 42 kit lens and the 40 to 150 telephoto so let's see what we can get I've been investigating and exploring what used to be the old boathouse and when I first got down here I thought I was trespassing but with a lack of any such private signs I've been wandering around in here and uh, realised that this is the home for the Merseyside Wood Turning Association. And I've just got a little bit of footage of three or four of the members working on their own items. So that was a really interesting little diversion to be honest with you. I should imagine that given my lack of preparedness, the stills that I've taken of the wood turners won't be anything spectacular. They were all taken at 800 ISO, just for the technically minded. I thought it worth illustrating the fact that the images you've seen of the wood turners are ones that have been edited already and I didn't want people to think that that's how they came out of the camera so this is um, my sort of editing before and after if you like using Affinity Photo which is my preferred uh, editing software package. Um, if we look up here on the right hand side it gives me the metadata and it tells me that I was using the 14 to 42 lens set to 22 mil and it was a hundredth of a second at f4.5 with an ISO of 800. 
and the image that you can see on screen is after I have done the um, alterations that you can see down the right hand side if I show you the before and after let's give you the split view so here now is as the raw image was captured by the camera because it was um, mixed lighting source of incandescent bulbs and fluorescent strip lights uh, and because I was only in there for literally 10 minutes at the very most I didn't have much option to do any changes to camera settings except select a higher ISO rating um, didn't have a chance to even think about changing the white balance I just wanted to get some of these images before the guys became too self-conscious um, so uh, this is how the camera captured it it's in my opinion uh, got a horrible color cast it's underexposed and it's very flat so I've um, if you look down here on the right hand side at the bottom you can see that I've set the white balance and the tint um, I've altered the exposure and black point and contrast and um, also checked that the highlights which are still clipped up here in the um, windows of the car parked outside um, to see what could be done with those and the adapted image is much better but I also want to point out to you how much the foliage outside has changed. If you look at the edited version, the green leaves in the trees up here have now got a definite blue cast to them. In the original, they're very much greener. However, it's such a small area of the image that, you know, in my opinion, the edited version it's worth putting up with that just to get the improvements in skin tone and general illumination and when you're altering white balance like this in post-production it's handy obviously skin tones help a great deal uh, but things like the fire extinguisher that gives you a good reference point I remembered very strongly that the um, metal items on the lathe were a nice shade of green with yellowy green lettering on it so those were the sort of key points that I was using as a reference the skin tone the fire extinguisher and the metal on the actual lathe if you get those sort of approximately right then in theory everything else should should look much more natural and I think compared to the original you can see quite a distinct difference so I thought I'd just put that in to illustrate the fact that what you've already seen isn't exactly as the camera saw it I guess that illustrates a point really doesn't it we photographers tend to go out with a specific subject in mind today I started out by intending to take lots of images at strawberry field sadly when I realized how many coach loads of tourists were arriving I had to quickly knock that plan on the head walked a couple hundred yards sorry meters across the way to Calderstones Park which is where I am now and investigated the old boathouse
but it just goes to show that sometimes it pays to modify plans because sometimes you can get a nice surprise but anyway for now from me in Calderstones Park I'm going to say thank you very much for watching thank you to everybody who has subscribed look after yourselves enjoy your photography and I'll see you all soon for another mind-bending installment of photography for enjoyment bye bye for now